the next is exploring the Jesuit's role in early Qin social prints by Dr. Anita Xiaomi Wang. Dr. Wang, please. Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be invited to the presentation panel today. And uh, my name is Anita Xiaoming Wang, and I'm an Alexander von Humboldt postdoctoral fellow. And also, I'm an associated researcher in the Center for Chinese Visual Art of Birmingham City University of the United Kingdom, and also an art teacher of the Warden Sproul Academy. Between 2015 and 2018, I worked as a postdoctoral fellow um, in the uh, state art collections in Dresden, Germany. And my project was entitled Chimusery and uh, Asiatic um, in the Saxon court, and which the, um, in the museum, the um, held 1,650 uh, graphic uh, collections of East Asian paintings and the prints. Among them, there were over 100 um, woodblock prints from Suzhou of the 16th and uh, of the 17th and the 18th centuries. So um, my um, my research during that time was to um, look at all the prints and also the paintings and to write the catalog and also analytical um, comments for each print. In 2000. 21, um, during the COVID period, and uh, finally the museum opened the uh, exhibition of all these collections. Some of the selected collections, um, uh, the first time showed to the public. All these collections were acquired by um, August Strong, the king of Poland in the 17th and 18th centuries. And with the um, museum selected Prince Collections catalog, Lushing, was also published in 2021, um, edited by my German colleagues, um, Cordula Bischoff and also um, um, Petro Kuma. So today my topic is to explore the Jesuits' role in early Qing Suzhou prints. Around the 1700, Suzhou woodblock prints appeared with a clear European influence. They became popular Chinese products in Europe and Japan. However, they were only produced for a short period of time, roughly from the 1700s to 1760s. And their emergence and also disappearance was related to Catholicism in China. So as already noted, also mentioned by the previous scholars, and certain pseudo prints made use of European artistic techniques, most notably the linear perspectives, shading and hatching. A number of pseudo prints now in Japanese collections feature all these techniques. Some of them include the inscriptions, which point directly to their European sources of influence. One such print, which you can see on the screen, dated to 1732, has the title Western Style Picture of Five Horses, in which Tai Xi is typically understood as Europe, European or Western. Another print with the title of Complete Romance of West Chamber, dated to 1747, is more explicit in stating the source of its influence with the inscription imitating Western brush methods. A further example can be seen in the print influenced by Western technique, uh, which is entitled Hundreds of Children or Hundreds of Sons, dated in 1743 and inscribed using the method of Western style brush. So there has been debate about how those influences came to be in these prints. I accept that the appropriation and the transfer of European pictorial techniques into 18th century Sujo printmaking um, most likely came through multiple means. I argue, however, that Jesuits were the primary source of influence uh, which um, with respect to the uh, introduction of Western art techniques. Their documentary records indicating that the Jesuits had connections with, and in some cases, friendships with the Suzhou printmakers to use a linear perspective and other European techniques. In 1692, 
The Council Empire gave the edict of a tolerance and which granted the authority for the Jesuits to settle in China. Over the following decades, Catholicism flourished and the number of Chinese converts to Catholicism became uh, between 1695 and 1703 rose to approximately 200,000. So there are four prints in the Dresden collection made in Suzhou and with the linear perspective and dated in 1711, indicates that the pseudo prints with linear perspective were being made in a period when the political environment had become more favorable for the Jesuits and their followers. One of these four extant prints has an inscription in the top left, which reads, Xin Tian Wang Yun Tai Zhi Bi, printed by Ding Yun Tai. And Ding Yun Tai, who's um, also an elderly man when he produced this prince, and also who believes in heaven or God, and identifying the artist as Yun Tai, and offers a clue to both his age and religious commitment. So let's have a look at the top left, and which we can see um, the signature is Xin Tian Wang, and Wang uh, refers to an elderly man, and also the uh, uh, Xin Tian, uh, which we believe we we believe we understand we understand as a belief in God or heaven. So the artist's full name is Ding Yun Tai, and he was born in Hangzhou. The character Wang is typically used to describe an elderly man, as I mentioned. So, which suggests this print was produced when Ding Yun Tai. Uh, was uh, was poss possibly um, an elderly man. And his name also mentioned in a publication by another Chinese Catholic named Zhang Xinyao from Hangzhou. In 1678, Zhang was baptized with the Christian name Ignatius, and in his book, clearly distinguishing the heavenly teaching, and Zhang refers to Ding Yun Tai um, he, he mentioned that his cursed name is Zi Lunan, describing him as a friend and characterizing him as a gentleman with a Catholic family active in the Christian community. The book was published in 1711, and it is evi evident that Ding was well respected by Zhang Xinyao and also by the local Catholic com community. So the reference in the uh, in the book also suggested that there was a connection between Suzhou prince and also the Jesuits, as Ding Yuntai was evidently a Catholic. So the use of other Chinese characters on the print from the Dresden collection, Xin Tian, uh, meaning believing in Catholicism, reinforces this notion. So this prince is the prince of um, um, four. And which we can see here on the top left, uh, on the top right, and there's a signature, and um, um, I'm feeling grateful for the translate um, for um, Professor Qinghua Wang, and who trans helped to translate it them as as Zhe Zhe Han um, Zhe Han Lu Lu Nan T C P. So that was the um, romanticist, um, romanticist kind of an, um, written, but um, in it's translated as Zhe means uh, Zhe Hang means um, in the uh, Zhejiang province and Hangzhou. Uh, Qing, and the second one, um, Qing Tan, um, which is translated as the uh, Qian Tang. And Lunan is the zi of the, the cursy name of Lu, um, Ding Yun Tai, Lu and TCP possibly translated as the uh, Tai Xi Bi, which means the Western style brush. Okay. So, and there are also other two type of uh, prints also bear the same signature, which is on the top. It's the same one from um, Ding Yun Tai is in the private collection of Mr. Christoph van der Bach, and which is quite different from the previous two in the collection of Dresden. And what we can see, um, the figures were depicted as a Western feature and also with the buildings and the bridge in the distance. 
So another print in the Dresden collection included in, um, in the 1738 inventory and printed in Suzhou appears to refer to Christian pictures of St. Dorothy and may have been based on the Portuguese copper plate engraving. An example of a wood, wood sculpture of St. Dorothy with a basket of flowers and a young boy dated in 1510 in the collection of the Baba Institute of Fine Art in Birmingham University in the United Kingdom has a similar visual elements to the print. While the Dresden print does not use linear perspective and it does make use of the European technique of hatching and which can be seen um, um, in the um, the art which can be seen in the feature of the women's clothing and the outline of the figures and the hatching lines on the clothes the hair and the patterns on the edges of the clothes they were all printed the figures close and also depiction of the facial structures and of both women and the boy are hand painted. So the nose of the woman, the shape of the eyes and the boy's curly hair, as well as the arms and hands of the figures are clearly influenced by European painting techniques. And there are clues which strongly suggest that the print was produced by a pseudo artist. So the woman's mouth, which we can see depicted in the Chinese style, and the printed pattern on the edge of the women's dress is a popular motif found in other pseudo prints. In, for example, um, it's entitled as a chrysanthemum and surrounding stems. So the ornaments hanging on her red bell and also the depiction of the basket are also in keeping with the style of the same Suzhou prints in the collection of the Yumi Mori Museum. So the print combines the traditional theme of mother and the son and with the elements of European Catholic iconography. So this print suggests that during this period, in uh, before 1738 inventory in Dresden collection, the Jesuits were the only Christian order, and that uh, the connection and order order connection in China, indicating in turn that the print must have been connected to their activities. So the, those such. Um, prints came into Europe and they had different function than they were used in China and Japan. So for example, there's another connection, there's another print of the um, um, of the ladies and which also show the European technique in the, with the hatching and also cross hatching. And they were used for the wallpaper decoration and which we can see on the top right bot uh, on the right uh, bottom right um, picture that showed on the back of the print um, it's mounted on the canvas and which believed that which is believed that it was mounted somewhere in Europe before they sold in the auction um, in European countries to to the um, uh, to any people that are from royal families or high social status. And the such examples can be also found in the different um, uh, Chinese rooms and in, in the castles in Europe. So this is the picture of a Chinese room in Lichtenwalde in Dresden. And we can see here with the Chinese prints and the paintings mounted um, in the wooden panel. So on the wooden panel, they were decorated with the uh, flowers and those are in Baroque style. The room was, uh, was built in 1720s and those prints were dated earlier than 1720s when they put them on the wall. Again, we can see the cross hatching on these um, prints and also with the features of European influence. Another example is the Badenberg, which is the um, bathroom of, uh, in the palace of Nymphenburg in Munich in Germany, with also um, such type of a print shows European techniques. So those um, the the Badenberg room was um, um, set, uh, was um, uh, established um, between the seventeen fifties to seven um, between the uh, early eighteenth century. So the prints were possibly uh, were mounted there be, uh, between seventeen fifties to seventeen sixties, but they they are very likely uh, to be um, shaped over much earlier than this date. 
So where we can see the prints were mounted on the wall and also with the paintings of the flowers and the plants around it, uh, that was done by the European artist. So another example of a printer from Suzhou who has a close connection with the Jesuits is um, the artist Ding Liangxian. In the British Museum's Salon collection, there are 29 woodblock prints with flowers, birds, fruits, and antiquities dating from 1730 to 1753, some of which bear the name Ding Liangxian. Those prints do not use European pictorial techniques but inscriptions on the prints indicate that Ding Liangxian was based in Suzhou and his name is absent from the standard resources and the listing in Qing Dynasty painters, but occurs in a record of a legal case from 1747 during the Qianlong period. These records that he was fugitive in the case in which a 27-year-old man called Chen Sangguan from Changzhou County in Suzhou confessed to being a Catholic. He went on to give further information about Ding Liangxian, stating that on seventh day of the 11th lunar month in 1747, two Jesuits and, and one of them named Antonio Henry Keys, also known as Huang Anduo, and went to visit the house of Chen Sangguan's uncle-in-law, Ding Liangxian. Chen claimed that the two Jesuits stayed for one evening before taking a boat to Jiaxing, but that Ding Liangxian was not at home as he was away selling his Western pictures, which is also known as Yang Hua. So in 1754, there was a further legal case involving the Jesuits, Antonio, and in which Ding Liangxian again appeared. On this occasion, Ding confirmed that he was from Changzhou County and that he was 79 years old. And he confessed that he was fugitive from the aforementioned Antonio case and that he was a seller of Western pictures. For his crimes, uh, Ding Liangxian was sentenced to being beaten a hundred times with wooden um, staves and uh, imprisoned for three years. So a print from the Yumi Mori Museum um, entitled 10 Views of West, West Lake and is in European style with a linear perspective, hatching and a chiaroscuro, and may have been associated with uh, Ding Liangxian an inscription at the top of the print gave the name of the artist as Ding Yingzong. Since both Ding Yingzong and Ding Liangxian's names occur individually in inscriptions in separate prints within the famous group of 29 prints in the British Museum Salon collection, we may assume that there was a connection between the two individuals. So some, uh, some scholars they, um, propose that Ding Liangxian and Ding Yingzong were the same individuals and based on the 29 similar prints in the British Museum, which are signed with both their names. And some other scholars also believe that and that they are two different people based on the observation of the calligraphy. So in my point, and although those um, distinctions are, are certainly evident, the calligraphy on different prints with the name Ding Liangxian displays a degree of variation as a due example of calligraphy on different Ding Yingzong's prints. So the calligraphy on the prints signed also with Mr. Ding and more closely resembles the calligra calligraphy on the prints signed by Ding Liangxian. So it would appear that Ding Liangxian and Ding Yingzong were different individuals, but were probably related or close, but quite close, suggesting that they probably both worked in the same family workshop and that both were evidently proficient and in such kind of a prince with flowers and a buzz. And this is the only way I believe to explain both the similarities in the representation, representational style in their prints and the use of the Mr. Ding signature. So 
Back to the 10 views of West Lake Print, which is on the left of the screen, bears the signature of Ding Yingzong from Qian Tang, printed in the workshop um, Jia Xuan, Jia Shu Xuan in Woman. So the pavilions and the bridges, lake and the mountain scenery in the distance so all display the influence of European pictorial style with the linear perspective and also the shadow and the highlights. We know from Ding Liangxian's confession in 1754 legal case that he was from Changzhou and his nephew Chen Sangguan confessed in a 1747 legal case that Ding left home in Changzhou to sell Western picture Yanghua. And this have been the type of Western picture I believe Ding Liangxian was selling when the Jesuits visitors came to stay. So a likely theory, therefore, is that Ding Yingzong having family and a professional link to Ding Liangxian was producing single sheet prints with linear perspective and other Western techniques of the type described as a Western picture and that the Jesuit's rule in this appearance of these techniques remains central. So one example in the Eisenstadt in Austria um, the, um, in, uh, is related with the relationship between the Jesuits and the woodblock prints using Western pictorial techniques and can be seen on the screen. So the prints decorating the walls of the small Chinese salon in the East Hasi Palace in, uh, in um, Eisenstadt are believed to have been acquired by Paul II Anton the Prince um, of East Hasi. So who served as Imperial Ambassador in the Nepal so from 1750 to 1752. And I had this prince installed in the palace during the 1750s. This is a series of six woodblock prints, which depict the theme of mothers and sons in interior de uh, settings, are pasted in um, kind of rectangular panels on the walls of the salon. So with each rectangular panel containing pair of prints pasted side by side, the prints bear inscriptions identifying print shop as the Xindu shop of Gusu, Gusu. And on a separate print, the artist name Guan Rui Yu of woman is appeared. So the prints use the linear perspective, which is very clear and together with the hatching lines to depict the shadow cast by clothing and furniture. This example provides further evidence of the influence of European pictorial techniques and the name of the shop, Xin De Hao, may in addition point to Catholic influence because Xin De referred to in the print shop name is related to Guan Rui Yu. And under that Xin De's full name was Guan Xin De. Guan Xin De's name was also mentioned in the legal case of Antonio's um, case. So identifying him as a Catholic and a seller of Western style pictures. So this provides evidence for another example of a connection between a Suzhou printmaker using Western representational techniques and the Jesuits. So the Qianlong Empire conducted the, the Christian campaigns and um, Christian campaigns and the pro prohibit prohibition throughout the 1740s and the 1750s. The imperial policy of a forbidding the Catholicism in China appears likely to have had a direct impact in terms of a decline in the use of linear perspective and other European pictorial techniques in Suzhou prints after this time. So the evidence for this decline can be seen in the important the, the importation of Suzhou prints to Japan. Documented in Japanese customers re records from this period, well, trade with Europe was restricted uh, only to Guangzhou port in 1757. Trade from China to Japan continued much as before. So although the quantity of Suzhou prints being imported into Japan did not diminish, so few prints with a linear perspective still appear there after the late 18th century. 
Sujo prints dating from the 1770s in Japanese collections show a distinct this distinct um, absence of linear perspectives and also the hatching, but instead emphasize more Chinese style outline drawings. Here's an example of the prints that are produced after this period of the time in the late 18th century in the collections of Jan Sobieski and in the Ulanov Palace in Warsaw, where we can see um, on the, as a screen, and there is no hatching lines and no linear perspective. And then it's also going back to the style of traditional Chinese paintings. So these changes in representation representational style of Chinese prints being imported into Japan during this time and maybe accounted to the ban issued against the Jesuits in China and the consequence limiting of access to and interest in European pictorial materials by Suzhou printmakers. So the conclusion is um, the appearance of the linear perspective and other Western artistic techniques in pseudo printmaking was closely related to the presence of the Jesuits in China. Soon after the Jesuits had arrived in China, they became involved with the printmakers and whose skills were employed in support of the Jesuits' mission in the production of religious images. <laughs> Then the Jesuits established friendships with Suzhou based printmakers who use linear perspective in woodblock prints, book illustrations as early as the 1680s, and also with the producers of single sheets prints by 1711. If not earlier, such relationships with the Jesuits introducing linear perspective and other European techniques can be seen in prints produced by a number of printmakers. Despite the fact that the number of such prints surviving from this period is very small and very little information is available about any of the printmakers who produced these images, the the correlation between the anti-Catholic um, statement and uh, following the Qianlong Empire's proscriptions of uh, Catholicism in the 1740s and the 1750s and the linear perspective disappearing from Suzhou prints was a result of the connection made between prints displaying these techniques and the Jesuits. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Thank you.